Welcome to this platform. So in this video, we continue revising 2024 ECZ Internal Science Paper 2, which is chemistry. So far, we've done section A and section B, and the videos are available on this platform. You might want to check them before you come to this one. So in this one, we are going to end by, or we are going to conclude by answering section C. So section C, you are given three questions of which you are required to choose two of your choice. So the instruction answer any two questions from this section in the separate booklet provided. So unlike in section B where you answer from the same uh, from the question paper in the spaces provided, in this one you are going to use the separate uh, booklet. So now let us look at the first question. So the first question in this case uh, is draw the label diagram. That is C1. The first question of C1. Draw the label diagram to show the bonding in copper. Draw a label diagram to show bonding in copper. Now, one thing you should know is that copper is a metal. So, we are going to look at the bonding in metal, which is called metallic bonding. Okay, so let us answer question one. That is C1. So, the first question is, draw a label diagram to show the bonding in copper. Draw a label diagram to show the bonding in copper. So one thing you should know that copper is a metal and therefore the kind of bonding that occurs is metallic bonding. So to present the diagram for metallic bonding we are going to draw, let us say this is a copper metal. So the atoms of copper inside lose electrons and of course the electrons become delocalized. So when they lose electrons they become positively charged and of course electrons are negatively charged and they become delocalized or they are freely moving. Okay, so we have the positive charge of copper and of course the, the delocalized electrons. So it is these delocalized electrons that gives the characteristic feature of the metal such as the ability to conduct electricity because they are able to carry charge. So to present it is going to look like this. Okay. So this is the bonding in copper. We have the positive ions and of course the electrons that are delocalized. The forces of attraction between the positive ions or metallic ions and of course the delocalized electrons. That is what we call metallic bonding. Then explain why metals are malleable. Explain why metals are malleable. So metals are malleable. What it, what it means is that they are able to be drawn into a sheet. Now, what makes them malleable? So... I'll write starting from here. So because that is C, that is B, C1B. So the answer is because the atoms in metal, so because atoms in metal can slide past each other, can slide past each other. Okay, slide past each other when force is applied when force is applied and can easily and can easily be shaped or modeled without breaking okay that is what makes metal um, malleable due to the arrangement of atoms. Okay, when force is applied, they are sliding past each other without uh, breaking. Okay, this makes the metal uh, easily to be drawn into a sheet. So that is for B. Then for C, let me just remove this. Like I said, the space here is not enough. So we are going to... Uh, I'm going to be, I'll be rubbing, I'll be raising the answers. So make sure that you, you write them. So copper corrodes slowly, that is for C. Copper corrodes slowly in damp air. One of the, one of the corrosion product has the formula, this one. So copper corrodes slowly in damp air. One of the corrosion product has the following formula. So as you can see the formula. Calculate the percentage by mass of copper in the compound. Calculate the percentage by mass. So let me just use this same top part 
calculating the percentage by mass of copper. So I'm going to say percentage percentage by mass percentage by mass of copper equal to mass of copper divide mass of the whole compound okay mass of copper divide the mass of the whole compound multiply by 100 okay multiply by 100 so in this case mass of copper as you can see copper you have copper here and copper here one copper the mole, the relative formula mass is uh, 64 so 64 times 2 we are going to have 128 okay then divide the whole compound here you have copper if we are to find for this one you have copper which is 64 so 64 plus carbon is 12 plus oxygen is 3 so 3 multiply 16 plus we have another copper 64 then plus you have oxygen and hydrogen which is 16 plus 1 then multiply by 2 so the whole of this one is going to give you 220 uh 220 okay the whole of this one is going to give us 220 so divide 2 20 here multiply by 100 and this one should be able to get 58 percent okay so please that is how you find the percentage by uh percentage by mass of copper so we have two of the copper we've multiplied by two which gives us 128 that is 64 times 2 128 then of course the bottom part if we were to find everything is giving us 220 okay so we should be able to find 58 so make sure that as you go through, you recalculate uh, the whole answer. Make sure that you counter check. Mistakes can be made. So the second question, we've answered this one. Percentage, calculate the percentage by mass of copper. The second question of C, how would you show that this compound here, copper carbonate, copper hydroxide, contain carbonate ions? So in other words, how do you determine the presence of carbonate ion so that is on quantitative analysis that is testing for uh anions so make sure that you check that information so this question i'll leave it to you how do you test for the presence of carbonate ions how do you do it okay so answer this question